If you're new to the piano, you might be using stickers on the keys to help with note names. My name is Ted, and I want to convince you to get rid of those as soon as possible. First, I'll show you how, then I'll explain why. This is the musical alphabet. Each letter refers to a position in the pattern of black keys. So A is always here among the three black keys, C is always just beneath two black keys, and so on. You notice there are only seven letters in the musical alphabet. And that's because it only takes seven white keys for us to arrive back at the same place in the pattern. This is C, this is also C. And the keyboard's designed this way because these two notes sound related. Two Cs sound good together in a way that C and D flat do not. So you only have seven shapes to learn to know all the white keys. And remember that as a kid, you had to learn 26 letters in the alphabet. Your job here is a lot easier. Piano beginners often learn one or two notes and then find the rest by counting up in the alphabet. So maybe you'll learn A, and then if you need to find D, you'll count A, B, C, D. It's much more practical just to learn every shape on its own. So learn that D is in the middle of two black keys. It's okay to name black keys using a nearby note because that's actually included in the name of the black keys. D flat is just beneath D. And we could also call this note C sharp. It's just above C. If you don't already know the names of the white keys without having to think about it, or you're using these note name stickers, you should make this one of your first priorities as a piano student. It doesn't matter what style of music you're playing. It doesn't matter if you're an amateur or a professional. Everyone uses these note names. It's like getting to know a new person and taking the trouble to learn their name. Which brings us back to the note name stickers. If you leave those stickers on the keys of your piano, it's a little like you've made a new friend and you're asking them to wear a name tag whenever they're around you. You'll find yourself using the name tag to remember their name when you should actually just look at their face and remember what their name is. And in this case, you're looking at the sticker instead of looking at the black keys, which is actually how every pianist finds their way around the keyboard. So let's say I've convinced you, you're taking the stickers off. What can you do to practice and get good at this skill? There are two ways you can quiz yourself every time you walk by your piano. One, you can start with the name of the note. You could say, okay, I'm looking for E and then you'll find every E. Or you can start from the note. You can pick a random note on the keyboard and then name it. All right, I just played G. Keep quizzing yourself until this becomes easy. And I promise in a week or two, you'll reach a kind of escape velocity where you'll be able to use this skill without thinking about it when you're learning a new piece of music. And at that point, you won't have to practice this anymore. It's the same as how once you actually start reading books, you don't have to drill yourself on the alphabet. If you need a reference sheet, I have made this guide for all 12 pitches, and I've intentionally separated them out. Because uh, if you're used to looking at a guide where you see all the letters next to each other like this, you're encouraged to use the alphabet to count up and down. And that's not what we want. We want you taking each shape on its own. I'll leave a link to download that guide for free. Again, my name is Ted. Go ahead and subscribe if you wanna see the next videos I make and happy practicing.